Hey everyone, welcome to this lesson on calculating percent increase. Today I'm going to show you an easy three-step process for solving any problem involving finding a percent increase. So let's go ahead and start with this first example. So in this scenario, if your total savings of $60 at the start of the week rose to $90 by the end of the week, what was the percent increase? So in these kind of problems, the first step should be to identify or highlight the key information. And in this example, the key information should be that we had $60 at the start of the week, we had $90 by the end of the week, and we want to find the percent increase. So here is where our three-step method for calculating percent increase will come in. And the first thing we have to do before we start using those three steps is to identify two values. The starting value, which is 60 in this example, and the final value, which is 90. Again, because we started with $60 at the beginning of the week, and we ended up with $90 by the end of the week. So again, the starting value is 60, and the final value is 90 in this example. And as long as we can correctly identify the starting value and the final value, we can find the percent increase. So now let's go ahead and work through the three steps. Step one, find the difference. So that means we have to take our final value and our starting value and find the difference between those two numbers. Now the one key tip here is to always put the larger value first. So in this case, we have 90 minus 60, which we know is equal to 30. So the difference between the two values is 30. So now we're ready for step two. In step two, we have to divide the result by the starting value. Now the result just refers to the number that you got from step one when you found the difference of the two numbers. So in this case, the result we're talking about is 30, and we're going to divide that result by the starting value, which in this example is 60. So in step two, we're taking 30 and dividing it by 60. And when we take 30 and divide it by 60, the result is 0 0.50. Now the important key for step two is to always express your answer or the result as a decimal not as a fraction, so always as a decimal for step two. And now the final step, step three, is to multiply by 100. So just take that decimal that you got from step two, in this case 0 0.50, and multiply that number by 100. So 0 0.50 times 100 is equal to 50. And we can conclude that there was a 50% increase between the amount of money that you had at the start of the week to the amount of money that you had at the end of the week. So now that we've solved this problem, let's go ahead and take a look at two more examples. And again, the numbers will be different, but the three-step process will be exactly the same. So as long as you can identify the key info, namely the starting value and the final value, you can use this three-step process to solve any problem where you have to find percent increase. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this second practice problem. Last year, it cost $48 for Jacob to fill up his gas tank. This year, it cost Jacob $64 to fill up his gas tank. What was the percent increase? So just like the last example, we want to identify the key information, namely that the starting value was $48 and the final value was $64. And since we want to find percent increase, we can go ahead and use that three-step method. So starting with step one, we have to find the difference. And again, we're going to put the larger value first, in this case, 64 minus the smaller value, 48. 
So the difference 64 minus 48 is equal to 16. In step two, we have to take that result of 16 and divide it by the starting value. So 16 divided by, in this example, the starting value 48, which is equal to 0 0.33. And again, remember to express the result as a decimal. Whatever you get in step two, express it as a decimal, not a fraction. And now for the last step, we just multiply that result by 100. So that decimal 0 0.33 times 100 is equal to 33%. So we can conclude that there was a 33% increase in the cost to fill up Jacob's gas tank between last year and this year. So again, we just use that three-step method to solve this problem and calculate that percent increase. So now that we should be more familiar with that three-step method, let's go ahead and take a look at one more practice problem. All right, so let's read through this last practice problem and identify the key information. Last year, 96 students tried out for the baseball team at North University. This year, 212 students tried out. What was the percent increase in students who tried out for the baseball team? So again, the key information in this problem is that last year the number of students who tried out was 96, that's our starting value. And this year, the number of students was 212, that's our final value. And again, we're looking to find the percent increase. And we can do that by using that same three-step method. Starting with step one, we have to find the difference. In this example, the difference, 212 minus 96, again, the final value minus the starting value, is equal to 116. Now for step two, we take that result, in this case 116, and we divide it by the starting value, which in this example is 96. So again, for step two, 116 divided by 96 is equal to 1.21. And again, just like the last two examples, make sure you express that result as a decimal. And finally, we take that result from step two, 1.21, and we multiply it by 100. So again, 1.21 times 100 is equal to 121. So we can conclude that there was a 121% increase in the number of students who tried out for the baseball team between last year and this year. And I will quickly note that it's totally fine to have percent increases that are 100% or larger. A 100% increase just means that the starting value doubled to become the final value. So anytime that you're doubling or more than doubling between the starting value and the final value, your percent increase will be 100% or more. And that's it for this lesson. So if you want some more practice, you can go back and rework through these problems. Just know that if you get this three-step process down, you can solve any problem involving calculating percent increase. So on the next slide, you'll see one more practice problem that you can go ahead and try on your own. And that's it for today. So I'll see you all next time. Thanks a lot, guys.